Hey there, wine friends. Have you ever wondered what decanting a wine is all about? What does it even do? Does it really open up a wine? Do I have to do it with every wine? If I do it, how long should I do it for? If you found yourself asking any of these questions, stay tuned. I'm about to decan a wine for six hours, two hours, and no time at all, and see what all the fuss is about. Now there are two main reasons you would want to decan a wine. One is for clarification, that's for older wines when you want to separate the wine from solids that may have formed in the bottle, sediment that has formed in the bottle. And the other is for oxygenation. Now this is mainly for younger wines where you want to expose the wine to air and help it breathe and open up. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means later. Now if you're decanting because it's an older bottle and there's a lot of sediment, you'll want to do a couple things. One is you'll want to let the bottle sit upright for at least a day. If it's been stored horizontally, which most wines are to keep the corks moist, all that sediment has settled in the bottom of the bottle and even into the neck of the bottle. You'll want to stand it upright for at least a day to let all of those solids fall to the bottom of the bottle. Next, you'll take a candle or a lighter, hold it under the neck of the bottle as you slowly pour into a glass, a decanter, or some other vessel and slowly pour until you start to see some of those solids come up to the base of the neck and you can't get any more clear wine out, okay? Now, ingesting sediment is not harmful. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not gonna hurt you. It's basically dead yeast cells and grape skins and seeds and uh, things from the winemaking process and tartrates and tannins that have bound up and fallen out of the liquid during the aging process. Still, it's not a very pleasant experience to get that gritty mouthful of, of uh, solids in the last glass of wine. So. Now, one of the other reasons you'd want to decant a wine, as I said, is oxygenation. To open a wine up and let a young wine breathe. Um, specifically, red wines have a lot of what's called tannins that are, that are extracted from the grape skins, the seeds, and the stems, also from the oak that red wine is aged in. Now, these, these tannins can have a very drying sensation and can actually mask the fruit and the other characteristics of a wine in its youth. Over time in the bottle, they kind of mellow out and the fruit takes center stage and then eventually some of the secondary earthy characteristics will take center stage as those tannins kind of melt away into the wine, but give it enough structure to hold up over age. So pouring a young red wine into a decanter like one of these can do a lot to soften up the wine and make it less aggressive in its youth. Now all that said, nothing replaces bottle age. There's just nothing in the world like a bottle of fine red wine that has aged on its own over many years and has allowed that natural slow in exchange of oxygen into the bottle through the cork and really allowed a very slow maturation process. That really bright and energetic fresh fruit at the beginning, those really harsh tannins, start to fade a little bit and subside and you get some of these secondary earthy characteristics and a lot of complexity in a red wine. Now, all wine is on a path to vinegar, right? So why decant? Why decant a young wine? How long do I decant? Well, it's really up to your, uh, your palate. I tend to like older wines. I tend to like wines that have opened up and exposed some of those secondary characteristics. So what we're going to do tonight is I've got a very tannic uh, young Ribeiro de Douro made from Tempranillo. This is a wine that um, some critics have said is 2028 through 2055 in terms of a drinking window. So very young, probably going to be very aggressive. What I've done is five and a half to six hours ago, poured a third of the bottle into this decanter. Two hours ago, poured a third of the bottle into this decanter. And in each time, I vacuum sealed this bottle back up. So All right, so let's jump in here and give this a shot. We're gonna start with the wine that's been open for six hours in this, in this aerator that, as you can see, has a lot of surface area to wine ratio. So a lot of air to this wine for sure. Wow. First off, it's a beautiful wine um, on the nose. Really, really good, ripe, dark black cherry and cassis, like kind of a black currant. Like you get on a Cabernet, but um, a lot of other characteristics going on here. Some, um, what I would explain is kind of maybe tar or wet asphalt, like after rain. Yeah, it's definitely like an asphalt nose. Um, and some scorched earth, like campfire or something. This is really kind of a very pretty wine. Very, very, um, very fruity, but also got a lot of uh, other things going on in the nose. You can smell this wine for a long time. Very pretty. Still a very tannic wine. It's got some grip to it for sure. Kind of that, you know, sandpaper on the tongue type feeling, very drying. But it takes back seat pretty quickly. They're very well integrated into the wine. It's not the dominant thing you notice. Up front you do, but then 
that fruit and those earthy characteristics kind of kick in on the back end. And there's a good kind of earthiness to this wine. The fruit is definitely still present. But those smoky notes definitely come through. This is a, it's a really good wine. Um, interested to see what happens. That was six hours. Let's see what this thing did with two hours in decanter. Yeah, a little less expressive on the nose already. Um, a little different. I'm not getting some of that ripe fruit. This, you know, definitely a little bit more, definitely riper fruit on the nose here than on this one. Um, maybe a little cigar box instead of that asphalt note. Still um, some, some cigar type tobacco notes. And the fruit's there, it's just not quite as expressive as on the, the one that's been out for six hours. Here's where you notice the difference. Wow, mouth coating tannins, really drying. And more spice on the back end. This, this was fruity um, and kind of that, um, that, uh, that asphalt smokiness. This is dry and spicy. I'm not getting as much fruit on this. It's there, but not as pronounced. Really what's dominated here is a, is a drying sensation and spice, um, less fruit. So big difference just in, in six hours to two hours, definitely a difference. Let's try the one we popped and poured. A little worried about this one. Definitely, definitely, definitely the least expressive. Um, more what I would describe as kind of menthol notes on this. Yeah, not as much going on in the nose for sure. Dry as can be. Um, like my, <laughs> my lips are sticking to my teeth dry, right? This is really astringent, not in a bad way. The tannins, again, on, on all three of these wines, very well integrated. Um, there's a really good acidity on this wine though, uh, which, which makes it kind of mouth watering in addition to being mouth drying. So it's a hallmark of a wine that's built to last, right? It's got really good tannic structure, but really good acidity to keep it fresh. But what I would tell you is on this wine that we just popped and poured, it's definitely not as expressive. It's really just dominated by that really drying sensation. And the finish is long and I can pick apart a couple flavors, but it was nothing like the one that's been out for six hours. much softer. Again, that ripe fruit coming through. Again, that smoky note, that tilled earth, that scorched earth campfire note. Just a tremendous difference. between. So there you have it. I encourage you to do this experiment at home yourself. The next time you're drinking a, a tannic red wine like Cabernet Sauvignon or uh, Syrah or certainly Nebbiolo or uh, Tempranillo. If you like these videos, guys, do me a favor. Go ahead and give it a like. Uh, if you're on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're seeing this on Instagram, follow me there. Uh, let me know what else you'd like me to cover. Uh